let me try to continue my discussion in the area of uh, piezoelectric ceramics. Uh, we have been talking about uh, the different coefficient uh, used in piezoelectric or uh, piezoelectric uh, phenomena. This we have already discussed the strain coefficient as well as the charge output coefficient and then the voltage coefficients. We will define them at a later stage how exactly uh, it comes up and also another very important parameter is the coupling coefficient which is basically the energy efficiency of the system of that particular material either from the electrical to mechanical or mechanical to electrical. Well, keeping those things in mind, this we have already discussed the coupling coefficient that is basically a ratio of the two energy terms. Uh, there is one more important aspect to be noted for piezoelectric uh, effect. Uh, we are basically applying a stress and generating a polarization or a voltage. Now, if you apply a instantaneous stress at certain time and then try to maintain that stress at a constant value, you do not change the stress then the polarization which is generated uh, does not remain constant over a period of time. In fact, it decays slowly or the voltage drops down. So, it is basically a dynamic process under which you get this effect of uh, piezoelectricity that is you have to continuously vary. Uh, the stress so that you get a continuous voltage. In fact, most of the time what we do we actually apply a sinusoidal stress like in vibrations. Okay. If you are vibrating there is positive stress there that is the compression and then tension or tension followed by compression and so that under that condition you get almost a polarization development of polarization or development of voltage in phase in phase with the applied stress. So, if you really want to use one really wants to use the piezoelectric behavior piezoelectric behavior of uh, uh, any material and make a device out of it, uh, it has to be designed in such a way that there is a uh, variable stress and uh, or in reverse way the polarization also will change uh, sorry polarization also can be varied so that the stress is generated uh, in phase with the polarization or applied electric field. So, that is uh, where that is one of the reason most of the piezoelectric uh, devices are actually operating under the alternative field not under direct field direct field applies only when there are certain applications. There are certain applications where a direct field applies or a direct voltage is generated, but that is instantaneous. Uh, you cannot maintain that voltage over a long time. So, coming back to hysteresis, because we have discussed these things in details why the hysteresis comes up what is the basic origin of a hysteresis curve or polarization versus electric curve you know, uh, field. Uh, uh, it is basically because of the domain structure. Uh, since all piezoelectric are supposed to be ferroelectric material as well. So, we have a uh, domain structure here as well and uh, we have a hysteresis curve. So, this hysteresis curve is also a very typical characteristics of piezoelectric material as in case of uh, ferroelectric material. Uh, in fact, they have the ferroelectricity in it. Uh, so, you have a virgin curve that means once you start from the 
zero field initially it follows this curve and then goes to the saturation uh, point uh, when all the domains are aligned parallel to the electric field and then if the electric field is reversed then it does not come back to the zero polarization at zero field, but there is a remanent polarization and uh, then you have a coercive field in the negative direction to neutralize it and then it follows and goes to saturation in the negative direction. So, that is the hysteresis curve we have with uh, piezoelectric material as well as in case of uh, ferroelectric material. However, we have a additional feature here that is a change of strain, change of strain as a function of electric field. So, in ferroelectricity we did not have that effect. So, we did not have this kind of a curve. Here since we are talking about mechanical energy or mechanical stress generated as a not only polarization, but it also generates a mechanical strain and uh, one can find out what is the strain apply, one is strain generated as a function of electric field. So, it is obviously as initially that is again the virgin curve that is from the initial stage the poled material of course, these are all poled materials. And so, in a polling poled material if you uh, apply an electric field the strain increases following this dotted curve. Then if the electric field gets reduced, strain gets reduced, it comes back to comes to 0. Once again following a kind of hysteresis pattern, you have a remanent strain here and then there is a coercive field to neutralize the remanent stress strain. However, there is a something different happens here when uh, the electric field goes further in the negative direction the strain actually increases, strain does not go below or it is there is no strain negative strain that way. So, the strain again increases and uh, you can you can get a reverse direction also in the same manner and then it goes there. So, it is a kind of butterfly curve. So, against a hysteresis curve in polarization versus electric field in the strain uh, field uh, or the strain domain you get a slightly different kind of behavior. Strain does not go negative, so you have a basically a kind of butterfly curve which is generated. So, all the time you have a positive strain. So, this is the difference here and the additional feature what we get in a piezoelectric uh, material as a function of applied field. Well, with this uh, descriptives uh, or whatever descriptions I have given qualitatively, uh, let us try to understand what are the different kind of coefficients and what is their mathematical representation or mathematically how one can relate to different, uh, different parameters. Uh, Application of mechanical stress induces dielectric polarization within piezoelectric material, piezoelectric material and thus sets up a voltage across the device that we have already seen and we have discussed. So, that is called direct piezo piezoelectric effect. Stress is a vector quantity and therefore, induces different magnitude of voltage in different directions. So, this stress is not a, a singular stress, it has a different components because uh, we will see later on if you apply a stress in one direction it has its effect on the uh, other directions uh, as well as you have seen in the very first picture uh, there is a either a reduction in the uh, diameter uh, when you uh, apply tensile force or if you have a compressive force the diameter gets increased. So, the, there is a Poisson's effect and therefore, the strain has a different connotations. Uh, it is not uh, always in one particular direction with respect to the geometry uh, of the specimen or geometry of the 
uh, device. So, we have to consider different uh, uh, directional properties uh, both for the uh, applied voltage as well as the applied uh, uh, the resultant strain or vice versa. So, the reverse effect is also there which I have mentioned earlier. The reverse effect is also possible application of voltage generates stress and also strain. So, stress and strain are actually related terms uh, by Hooke's law, we will discuss that in a few minutes. So, it generates in different directions and therefore, a converse piezoelectric effect also exists. Both stress and polarization being vector quantities, the coefficient which relate them are quite complex in nature and in fact, they form an elements of a tensor. Okay. So, these are so the uh, coefficients which uh, correlates mathematically correlates the mechanical uh, stress or strain to the dielectric polarization or the voltage. Uh, these coefficients are not singular numbers, they are a set of complex numbers, set of large numbers and depending on the different directions in which the stress is generated or the voltage is getting generated. So, the form actually a tensor uh, and uh, we will see how, uh, how many of the elements are there in the tensor. Mathematically, the relationships are represented as follows. There are different ways to uh, correlate them for the direct effect, uh, we say d i j, uh, d is the flux density and small d i j k. So, there are three orthogonal directions. So, these are i j k and uh, uh, that is the coefficient and the stress pattern stress is x j k. So, the x that is the stress is generated or stress is applied in one particular direction and uh, the flux density or the voltage may appear on different directions. So, that is why we have the subscripts i j or i j k and then j k we will come up with little de details of these things. The converse effect is can also be related like that, where stress is the x i j is d k i j. So, it is actually uh, the transposed uh, matrix d is actually a matrix now and uh, we will find e k, e k is the field. Okay. So, d i j k, d k i j is actually the transpose uh, matrix of d i j k. So, it, it can be written at k i j and e k of course, is uh, the electric field, electric field vector in the k direction. So, if you have a k direction and then we are measuring the stress in the i and j other directions, then this particular type of uh, coefficients will appear. where as has been explained just now, where uh, d i j k uh, its unit is coulomb per newton is the piezoelectric or piezoelectric coefficient of the third rank tensor. It is called third rank tensor, we will uh, see what is that third rank tensor. D is the charge density or you know also the flux density sometimes called and x is the mechanical stress and E is the applied electric field. So, these are the parameters which have been used in the two equations just presented. The subscript T, uh, superscript T, this T which again has been explained just now is refers to the transpose matrix of D i j k. So, D i j k transpose becomes D k i j. The unit of this transpose 
piezoelectric coefficient uh, is meter per volt, meter per volt. Okay. So, it is basically how much the extension as a function of unit volt. Now, the science of the charge density that is d, uh, d i j and that of x j k depend on the direction of the mechanical and the electric fields respectively. Therefore, the piezoelectric coefficient d i j k can be either positive or negative okay, because we have uh, different uh, possibilities of the stress as well as the strength uh, sorry the flux density. Now, how, the, how these uh, different subscripts come? The subscripts come from this kind of a consideration. In order to designate the axis in orthogonal directions, uh, in fact, one can have a orthogonal system of representation in the um, solid geometry like situation, where x, y, z or x, y, z are the uh, axis, orthogonal axis and they can be also uh, represented as 1, 2, 3 in another form of notation. Now, when we apply an electric uh, mechanical stress on this cube for example, that have a general uh, different kind of uh, consequences. Uh, any the stress can be normal to any of these axes either z axis or x axis or y axis. So, this can be called as normal stress. However, if there is a inclined stress and at an angle that will have different kind of components in different directions. Sometimes the stress can also be not may not be a normal stress, but it can be used as a shear stress. So, one uh, considers the shear modulus and uh, in the normal stress one considers the Young's modulus to correlate stress and strain, whereas uh, when there is a shear stress the coefficient is different and uh, one has to take into account the shear modulus of the material. So, uh, there are this kind of rotational stress surrounding this particular uh, axis that means, it is on the surface of this not perpendicular to the surface of any of the surfaces. So, this here stress acts on the surface right and they can be represented by a circular array like this. And uh, there will be three shear stresses 4, 5 and 6. Okay. So, uh, this is how uh, all the stress systems stress tensor can be represented. Okay. So, there are 6 elements of the stress 1, 2, 3, 5, uh, 4, 5, 6. 3 of them are normal stress and 3 of them another 3 are actually shear stress. So, this is how actually we will represent and we will find out the uh, equations as well as the coefficients, a series of coefficients in different directions. To link the mechanical and the electrical quantities, double subscripted coefficients as for example, d i j are normally used. Okay. Uh, the first subscript indicates indicated in the direct in, indicates it will be indicates indicates the direction of the excitation and uh, the second subscript is actually um, uh, second subs subscript denotes the direction of the system response. Okay. Uh, I will just correct that. Uh, the first subscript then indicates the direction 
of the excitation that is it may be uh, applied voltage or applied stress and the second denotes the direction of the system response how it responds. So, d i j it i is the direction if it is 1 2 for example, then uh, 1 represents the direction of the applied stress and we are measuring the response the electrical field generated in the second direction two directions. So, this is how actually uh, the notations have been used. The most important coupling modes are 3 1 minus 3 1 and minus 3 3 that is uh, i equal to 3 and j equal to 1 and uh, or i equal to th uh, 3 j equal to also 3. So, 3 3 actually is the normal mode whereas, 3 1 becomes a CR mode. So, these are the basically the uh, how the denote we denote a coefficient the piezoelectric coefficients. Well, there are a few more things to discuss that is in the minus uh, 3 1 mode the stress is applied in the direction of the perpendicular to the polling direction. Here polling direction is a reference and so uh, 3 directions as if it is in the z direction. So, assuming that the polling direction is in the z direction. So, you are applying a stress in the uh, perpendicular to the polling direction right and 3 1 applies if the electric field is along the polarization axis direction 3 again, but the strain is along axis 1 orthogonal to the polarization axis. Okay. So, 3 basically depends uh, or refers to the axis uh, par parallel to the polarization axis uh, the way the material has been uh, pulled. Uh, if it is a cylinder no, normally if it is a cylindrical specimen then uh, it is the C axis which is the pole normally is the polling axis and that is also uh, here will be referred to as the uh, number 3 axis. In the 3 3 mode a force is applied in the same direction as that of the polling direction as for example, compression of a piezoelectric block that is pulled on its top and bottom surface once again the same thing and we are measuring the uh, voltage generated also in the 3 direction same direction. Here 3 1 for example, it is we are measuring the voltage in the orthogonal direction a perpendicular direction uh, to the uh, top and bottom surface. Okay. So, uh, this is how the whole thing is designated. This is the example what exactly means by these are the modes which are normally used uh, in many devices and they are actually uh, more important modes. Uh, here to exemplify the situation little clear uh, in a clearer term uh, what we have taken is a strip this is not a cylinder, but a strip a, a, a rectangular strip of a piezoelectric material and uh, the directions are like this. This is two direction, this is one direction and the vertical direction is three, three direction or the z axis, x axis and y axis you can say. Okay. Now, this is what we call the 3 3 mode where we are applying the stress along the 3 direction the z direction. Okay. We are applying the stress along the z direction it is a compressive stress and then we are measuring the voltage also along the same direction between the two uh, bottom and the top surfaces. So, the axis actually is parallel. Okay. So, uh, the direction of the application of the stress and the measurement of the voltage is same. Okay. It may be reverse also that means, if we apply a voltage in this direction and try to measure what is the deflection or the change in uh, change of uh, dimension along the same uh, axis, then this becomes a 3 3 mode. Okay. 
whereas the same strip if uh, it is stressed differently I mean we are still measuring our voltage uh, between the top and the bottom surfaces whereas applying the stress in a orthogonal direction okay, we are now trying to pull along its length okay. and then also you will generate some voltage here because this also has a component because of the uh, um, Poisson's uh, relationship. So, if you apply a stress on this actually there will be a compressive stress between the top and the bottom surface. So, just like this here. So, these are it uh, there ha has some kind of a similarity either you apply a compressive stress along between the uh, along the top and bottom surfaces or apply a tensile stress along this. Okay. So, that will also result in a compressive stress between the two surfaces here two uh, parallel surfaces top and bottom. So, this becomes your 3 1 mode okay. we are applying voltage one can say this is 3 1 or 1 3 depending on which kind of uh, 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 parameter or which kind of um, voltage uh, whether we are measuring the voltage by applying uh, mechanical stress or the reverse of it. Okay. So, if we are 3 mode is this one which means 3 is the first one. So, we are applying the voltage here and measuring the stress. Okay. Measuring the stress. If it is 1 3, if this becomes 1 3, then it is reverse. Uh, we are measuring the, uh, we are applying the voltage, sorry, we are applying the uh, stress along one direction and measuring the voltage in the 3 direction. So, uh, one can have 1 3 also. So, there are many possibilities, there are many different combinations are possible. Accordingly, we have different kind of or different uh, um, coefficients with different subscripts. So, conventionally minus 3 1 mode has been the most commonly used coupling mode however, minus 3 1 mode yields a lower coupling coefficient k than the 3 3 mode. Okay. So, 3 3 mode and 3 1 mode has been described here, but uh, if given an option 3 1 3 3 mode is much better because uh, the 3 1 mode yields a lower coupling coefficient. So, the energy conversion is a little low in case of 3 1 mode compared to 3 3 mode because both of them are parallel to each other. So, this is a, a kind of interpretation physical interpretation of these modes or of these subscripts. We have a little complex description uh, of the same thing which we have discussed just now. Uh, for that we consider in a slightly different way uh, the piezoelectricity is a combined effect of dielectric and mechanical behavior that we have been mentioning all along. Uh, according to the principle of dielectrics one can write this equation this uh, that is we have seen in case of a normal dielectrics right. This is d the flux density uh, is equal to epsilon the permittivity and the electric field. So, the uh, flux density arises because of the applica application of the electric field and the coefficient is uh, of the uh, proportionality constant is actually the epsilon or the permittivity of the uh, material or the dielectric constant. So, higher is the dielectric constant flux density will be high for the same applied field. And uh, 
since we are talking about a mechanical uh, system as well, because two things are different, uh, they are uh, to some extent compatible, but they have their own identity. So, uh, not only dialectic behavior has to be represented, but also the mechanical behavior we have to understand and we know Hooke's law where stress and strain has been related by any Young's modulus. So, basically the proportionality constant as we know is the Young's modulus, but this Hooke's law has been here, it has been uh, written in a slightly uh, inverse manner that means this is the stress is proportional to uh, this is strain, this S is capital uh, S is strain and T is the stress. Okay. So, uh, Young's modulus is actually stress by st strain by uh, strain by stress, okay. whereas here this proportionality constant uh, small s is known as the compliance. So, it is the inverse of Young's modulus, it is the inverse s is the compliance which is the inverse of the Young's modulus. So, when, uh, all the terms have been explained here uh, d is equal to the dialectic displacement, epsilon is the permittivity, capital E is the dialectic field, capital S is the mechanical strain, this is mechanical strain and S is the compliance, is the inverse of Young's modulus and uh, inverse of Young's modulus and T, capital T is the stress, mechanical stress. So, all these parameters are involved when a piezoelectric system is functioning all these parameters are actually involved and some of them and some of them are coupled together and that is what uh, makes our life little complex. So, one can write a uh, uh, in the form of a tension notation uh, considering that the direct and the converse piezoelectric effects and the coupled equations uh, to describe the phenomena. This phenomena is described by what we call a coupled equation because in the same system, in the same material, we have two different uh, effects of two different parameters. Okay. One is the stress T and another is the electric field. So, both these things are operating on the same system. So, you have uh, this one what is the strain, if you want to find out what will be the strain that means deformation of the material, uh, it arises both because of the application of stress here and also application of the electric field. So, both these things are simultaneously operative, so that a strain is generated in a particular direction. So, this is uh, the kind of a coupled equation for expressing the stress uh, strain sensor, uh, strain tensor. Okay. So, this is the strain and then if you talk about the electrical uh, effect, then you have dialectic uh, flux density D also generated from stress and it is also a effect of electric field. So, in both the cases whether this is stress and electric field both is generating a strain mechanical strain and also both of them can generate a dielectric di displacement of the flux density. So, that is why they are called coupled equations and these are the uh, two effects, one is the direct piezoelectric effect, other is the uh, inverse uh, converse piezoelectric, piezoelectric effect, where D, D is this one, D is a coefficient proportional some kind of a proportionality constant is the matrix actually. This becomes the third bracket or the square bracket actually represents the matrix and uh, the second bracket here uh, uh, represents a tensor quantity. So, the uh, direct piezoelectric effect and D T is the transposed matrix for the converse piezoelectric effect 
the superscript E, E is E at, E indicates either 0 or a constant electric field that means stress uh, strain at constant electric field which is actually a coefficient and then we have uh, the superscript T also there is a superscript T here, here with the epsilon, epsilon superscript T uh, that indicates a 0 or a constant stress field and uh, the superscript T stands for the transposition of the matrix which has been already mentioned. So, these are the basic two equations which describes the overall phenomena of piezoelectricity. Okay. One is the direct piezoelectric effect, another is converse piezoelectric effect. The lower one is the converse piezoelectric effect and the upper one is the direct piezoelectric effect. Now, this can be expanded, this can be expanded to a large extent and there are many symmetry elements or uh, because of the symmetry of the geometry, uh, many of the coefficients are actually 0, but there are some real values here or finite values uh, in this. These are uh, one kind of one set of coefficients and these are another kind of coefficients. So, in fact, there are three uh, different coefficients. One is S, S coefficient or the uh, strain coefficient, this is the piezoelectric coefficient d and this is the dielectric coefficient okay, epsilon. So, that also have uh, uh, different uh, directional properties. Okay. So, here you have we have seen earlier this is this, this is the strain, strain can have 6 different uh, axis along 6 different axis, these 1, 2, 3 are the normal strain and 4, 5, 6 are the shear strain. So, these are 6 element uh, tensor here and then stress, sorry there is a missing link here, it should be uh, T 6, these are T 6, uh, this is 0, 0, 0. Okay. These are, uh, I think I made a mistake, I corrected somewhere, but it has not been shown. Uh, so, this is also T1, T2, T3, T4, T5, T6. So, these are the along the 6 directions, and the electric field is only along 3 different directions. Okay. The applied electric field is in 3 different directions, we are not applying electric field along any surface. So, uh, electric field is applied along uh, the orthogonal directions only. Okay. So, these are um, the total one is the uh, direct and there is the converse effect. Now, all of them all the uh, coefficients are really not effective. Okay. Some of them as you can see in all these uh, matrices some of them are effective and some of them are not and that of course, it is a particular symmetry element present uh, the strain charge relationship for the crystals with tetragonal symmetry. Okay. When there is a tetragonal symmetry this happens, if the structure is different or the geometry is different then of course, others will be operative this may not be operative. So, uh, it all depends on the uh, in an ideal case all these uh, 6 into 6 36 and here 6 into 3 18, there are 9 uh, here 3 into 3 and there again 6 into 3 18, all of them uh, uh, will be have a finite value, but most of the cases because of the particular symmetry cylindrical symmetry or a tetragonal symmetry what you have mentioned what we have mentioned here because of that uh, some of them uh, do not operate or do not appear actually. So, uh, we have seen here we are earlier discussing about 3 1 mode, this is your D 3 1 mode and this is your 3 3 mode. So, displacement as a function of applied field as well as stress. Okay. But the first equation represents the relationship for the converse piezoelectric effect and the later 
or sorry I mentioned uh, differently this is the direct and this is the converse. Okay, has been reversed here. Well, with this little background, let us go to what are the things we can uh, design with uh, with a piezoelectric uh, or piezoelectric uh, material. This is what we call a piezoelectric bimorph. Okay, it's actually a thin strip, thin strip. In fact, it is not a monomorph. It's called bimorph because there are two strips, two strips put together. Okay, uh, one is the uh, top one and there is the bottom one. Though there are two separate strips and uh, they have been put together. The difference between them, of course, the dimensions are same. It is a rectangular strip, very thin rectangular strip with small thickness, maybe uh, within a millimeter or so. And uh, the major difference here, you can see they may have two polling directions. Okay. Uh, both of them have they have been polled, so they will have a polling direction and the resultant polarization direction here uh, is this one for the bottom one it is pointing downwards and the top one also is pointing downwards. So, when we are putting them together it actually uh, we are uh, uh, putting them with the, with the use of a glue. Okay, some adhesive, uh, sometimes a metal can also be used uh, in between, but uh, when we are putting them together in such a way that in both the things, uh, both the uh, strips, the polarization axis is same, they are pointing downwards and we apply a voltage across this this is a positive voltage and the negative uh, this is the negative voltage of this side. If the polarization axis is like this, this strip will expand in this manner, will extend, its length will increase in this manner uniformly because of this particular uh, characteristics or relationships. So, this is positive and this is negative and they it will expand in this direction. Whereas, in the top case you can see here uh, these polarization directions are different. So, it has been, they have been put in such a way they have been while they have been, uh, have been glued together they have been put in such a way that the polarization axis are different okay? one pointing downwards another pointing upwards. In such a situation one will try to expand the other will try to contract. Okay? So, uh, this lower one is trying to like trying to extend just in the in this particular case. So, here one also both of them are trying to expand in the, uh, along the length. Here the lower one is ex trying to extend or expand whereas, the top one is trying to contract as a result what will happen it will bend the whole strip will bend. So, just by designing the configuration, the way we configure uh, uh, the materials, uh, uh, one can have two different effects and both of them have their implications. For example, by this process, by this process if you apply a very high frequency, uh, it will basically try to vibrate. Okay. Uh, once you put to the positive uh, positive field here, negative field on the other side and next moment if you change it will bend in the opposite direction. So, as a result if you have a applied voltage high frequency applied voltage this whole thing will start vibrating and it can generate noise uh, or a particular frequency not necessarily noise, but a sound wave uh, a audible uh, depending on the frequency a audible sign can be made the ultrasound, ultrasound, ultrasonic sound can also be generated. So, this is a very useful uh, design uh, for utilizing the piezoelectric effect of a material. Here of course, the, this also has its own utility, it is expanding, 
it is expanding or contracting. Okay. If you reverse the applied fold, applied field, it will try to contract. So, there is a instead of a vibration, you are getting uh, a, a linear movement, a linear movement expansion or contraction and that can also be utilized very uh, precisely and these movements are very, very small sometimes uh, few microns or tens of microns. Okay. So, if you need that kind of translation, so a actuators kind of actuations one can make this kind of a system or a device uh, where piezoelectric uh, actuators can be designed for many different purposes for small length of movements. Well, this is uh, another kind of design, this is another kind of design uh, where uh, the piezoelectric ceramics have been sandwiched, have been sandwiched between two uh, metal plates, very thin layer of metal plates. However, there is a gap in between. Okay. So, this is also another, like, this is basically uh, to enhance the vibration, enhance the vibration or uh, increase the intensity uh, of the, it is a kind of amplification one can generate by applying this metal plates. Of course, metal plates also have another very uh, important uh, uh, usefulness, uh, because you know this is expanding or contracting and vibrating uh, depending on what kind of electric field uh, one applies and therefore, uh, there is a lot of mechanical stress gets generated uh, in this uh, thin strip of ceramics. And ceramics as is well known it is a basically a brittle material and it has its own uh, problems of uh, crack propagation and so on. So, uh, when you are dealing with ceramics and also trying to mechanically stress you have to be little careful. So, that it does not break, it does not crack because it cracks almost instantaneously that is the character of a brittle material. So, it is also acting as a kind of reinforcement metal uh, can withstand much uh, uh, higher stress and it is a plastic material, it is not a brittle material. So, metal it is kind of a reinforcement for the metal uh, for the ceramics, but at the same time it also acts as an amplifier. So, if you gen want to generate a vibration or generate a sound uh, just in, in case of a loudspeaker or that kind of situations, this kind of metal acts as a uh, amplification, uh, provides an amplification factor. So, there are two different designs and uh, with two different names have been given. Uh, only thing the ceramics is same, but the metal configuration is slightly different. Now, here we have shown only one uh, layer of ceramics, uh, piezoelectric material, but one can also have a multi-layer piezoelectric material. You know, uh, we will come to that later on, what are the main applications of the piezoelectric materials. Uh, one of course is a sensor, the other is actuators. These are mostly different sensors and actuators uh, and uh, the amplification or the sensing capability or the actua actuation capability can increase um, by many fold by multi layering. Earlier we have seen in a multi layer capacitor uh, the effectiveness of a capacitance or the overall value of the capacitance can be enhanced by multi layering uh, with a sandwich structure in between you have electrode metal electrodes. Here also very similar uh, amplifications can be done, you can use very thin layers, thin layers of piezoelectric material and then uh, screen printed metal films. So, multi layer structures are also used quite extensively for uh, enhancing the actuation property, particularly the load bearing property, the load bearing property because when you are trying to actuate, actuate in the sense you are trying to physically move something, 
physically change the dimension, physically change the position. So, uh, you, you, you have to move different kind of loads. Okay? You can uh, you, you need different kind of mechanical stress. So, that mechanical stress gets enhanced. One is the vibrational enhancement that means, the amplitude of vibration. So, that is one kind of enhancement or amplification. The other thing is the amplification of the total load bearing capacity. That means, how much load it can move okay, or physically move from one position to the other. So, that can be enhanced by multi layering. So, although the property uh, the inherent property of the material remains same, but, but just by designing uh, a different configuration one can enhance the property to a large extent. So, these are some of the ways one can use uh, piezoelectric materials. Well, uh, we are coming back to the material property once again. Uh, we have not discussed too much about the material so far. Uh, the generally we have discussed the properties and how one can design, what is the relationship between the polling direction and uh, then how to um, how a bimorph can be bent or increased in dimension longitudinally and so on. So, far as the material is concerned, the best material, the most important material available to us is once again a perovskite uh, compound. Uh, earlier we have seen uh, barium titanate as one of the uh, very useful uh, ferroelectric material, ferroelectric uh, ceramics. Uh, here is another uh, perovskite material, in fact, a, uh, a, a, a compound or a uh, solid solution, solid solution of two perovskites, one is lead zirconate and other is lead titanate. Both of them have perovskite structure, so there is a complete solid solubility. So, you can in fact have uh, lead zirconate on one side and lead titanate on another side, this is a phase diagram in fact. So, it is basically a phase diagram, this is uh, lead zirconate, 100 uh, percent lead zirconate and this 100 percent lead titanate. So, you have a complete solid solubility. Uh, uh, you can uh, fix the composition at any point on this axis, okay, whether it is 25 percent, 50 percent, 70 percent and so on. Now, this is basically the phase diagram and it represents uh, various different uh, polymorphic forms uh, of this compound of this particular solid solution. Uh, if you take uh, pure lead zirconate, uh, you have uh, this is the ferroelectric phase, it is stable over a composition range, you can add about 50 percent of around 50 mole percent of lead titanate and you have a rhombohedral, this is the rhombohedral ferroelectric phase. Okay. So, the ferroelectricity as you uh, remember is, the, is very intimately uh, connected to the uh, crystal structure. So, this rhombohedral uh, structure is actually the ferroelectric phase and uh, if you increase the temperature, this is the temperature axis. So, if you increase the temperature beyond this line, beyond this uh, line, then the ferroelectric get lost. So, you have uh, a QD temperature uh, which locus is like this at for 0 percent lead titanate that means, 100 percent lead zirconate the Curie temperature is around little less than uh, 250 is about 240 245 degrees right. Uh, whereas, if you add lead titanate if you add lead titanate continuously you can see the Curie temperature increases and it goes up to almost very close to the 500 degree 500 degree centigrade right. So, the Curie temperature changes Curie temperature changes by adding more and more lead titanate to lead zirconate. However, throughout this range there is a ferroelectric phase, okay. there is a, this also a ferroelectric phase, there is a ferroelectric phase here and there is a Curie temperature. Now, this region, this region is the uh, cubic phase. Okay. So, since the cubic phase is symmetric phase, it cannot have ferroelectricity or 
piezoelectricity. Uh, so, uh, it uh, it is actually cubic phase and paraelectric phase, okay. so it is a simple dielectrics or a linear dielectrics. Whereas, below this Curie temperature, it is both ferroelectric and also piezoelectric. Now, there is another point to be noted here, this particular boundary. Okay. There is a phase change here as a function of composition. This is rhomboedral phase and this is tetragonal phase. Both of them are ferroelectric phase no doubt, but the structures are different. Okay. This is a rhomboedral phase, this part is rhomboedral phase and this part is tetragonal phase. And this is what we call the boundary between rhomboedral where the rhomboedral phase is changing to tetragonal phase. And this particular boundary is called morphotropic phase boundary, morphotropic boundary and that has a very important connotation on the property of uh, the ferroelectric or the sorry the piezoelectric material particularly the lead zirconate and lead titanate solid solution of lead zirconate and lead titanate uh, which is uh, in short called PZT. Okay. So, it is the PZT or sometimes called PZT. Uh, <coughs> Uh, they, uh, this is a very, very important uh, piezoelectric material and it has been extensively used in industry for many, many different uh, devices. We will discuss little bit of that in the next class. Okay. So, uh, for the time being goodbye and thank you.